Hi, I'm Chad Gonzalez. I have a tremendous story I want to tell you about healing, but not just healing, but also about hearing from God and getting words of knowledge in order to set people free. I'll never forget this was several years ago in College Station, Texas. It was Easter Sunday, so traditional Easter Sunday, the service is packed out, and we had just finished up with the worship uh, parts, portion of our service. And my wife, Lacey, she had come up and she had stopped the service and she said, hey, everyone, there's a man who just showed up to church and he needs a miracle. Now, I didn't know what was going on beforehand. I was in the service enjoying the worship and Lacey had happened to be walking through the foyer of our church and in had walked this man and his wife and the man had come in on a walker and he saw my wife and he recognized Lacey and said, hey, I know you're the pastor of the church. He said, we came here for a miracle. And she asked, she said, what's going on? And he said, well, we've been hearing about all the miracles that's been taking place at your church. And he said, I'm a roofer and I fell through the roof of a house about five years ago when I broke my back. And he said, I've been through multiple surgeries. The doctors have tried to help and nothing has helped. And he said, we need a miracle. So Lacey leads them into the service. She stops the service and she tells everyone, she says, hey, there's this man here who needs a miracle. Pastor Chad's gonna come up here and heal him. Now, I have no idea what's going on. I'm not like in healing mode. I've just been there worshiping and enjoying the worship service. So I walk up on the stage and I begin to talk to him. And I said, what's going on? And he gives me a short version. He said, well, I broke my back several years ago and I'm in extreme pain. I can't work anymore. He said, I can barely walk. And so in that moment, I got real bold. It wasn't something I was thinking up beforehand, but I got real bold. And I said, has anyone here ever seen a miracle? And I saw quite a few hands go up and I said, so who here has never seen a miracle in front of your eyes? Well, there was four girls that were in the very back that raised up their hands. Now we were in College Station, Texas, where Texas A&M University is at. And we had quite a few college students that were there. And so I told those college students in the back, I said, y'all come up here to the front. I want you to sit in the front row and watch a miracle in front of your eyes. Now, again, I don't know really anything about this man. I don't know his backstory. I don't know anything. I'm just being really bold right now. And so the people in the front row, they scoot over and these girls, they come and sit on the front row. And I told them, get ready for a miracle. And so I go up to this man. I did what I would normally do in these type of situations with someone who had some physical pain. I laid my hands on him. I wasn't feeling anything real supernatural. Didn't feel anything at all. I just laid hands on him and released by faith the power of God into his body. And I said, now go ahead and bend over and check it out. And so remember, he has his back to the congregation. He bends over and as, as he's coming up, I see tears coming out of his eyes. I realized very quickly, these were not tears of joy, these were tears of pain. And I can tell nothing happened. And yet everyone in the church is clapping their hands. They see him bend down, they think he got healed. Now I'm gonna be real honest with you. In that moment, these thoughts begin to flash through my mind. You're an idiot, what are you gonna do? You just told all these people, sit back and watch a miracle in front of your eyes and nothing happened, what are you gonna do? So then the thoughts are running through my mind. Okay, I could tell this man, like a lot of people would, well, just keep believing, brother. You know, God's going to manifest it at some point. Or I'm thinking maybe I could just whisper in his ear and say, hey, meet me in, the, in my office at the end of service. We'll pray with you. I, these thoughts are coming through. How can you save your pride and your reputation? Because it obviously did not work. It didn't work. But in that moment, I decided, you know what? I'm a man, not a mouse. I do believe this. We're going to get this figured out. And so the ushers came up and it was a pretty heavy set guy because he couldn't, he could barely walk, couldn't get around. He'd gained a lot of weight. And so three ushers come up and they bring a chair and they sit him down in the chair. It took three ushers to help him sit down. Now in that moment, I don't know what to do. I'm standing there in front of a, a packed out Easter crowd in our church. My fallback was this, I said, everyone, let's just lift our hands and let's just begin to pray in tongues. I didn't know what else to do. And so while we're sitting there and praying under my breath, I said, God, what do I do? 
because now I'm starting to feel the pressure. Now, I'm not the healer, but I just made this bold, audacious statement of, hey, if you haven't seen a miracle, come up here and watch. And so as we're, as we're praying in tongues, all of a sudden on the inside, I was reminded of this song called uh, How He Loves Us. And so our band was still on the stage. And so I turned back and I said, hey, let's sing that song, How He Loves Us. I didn't know what else to do. I'm, I'm grasping for, <laughs> for help here. So we began to sing that song. Now this man is sitting down in the chair and I had my hand on his shoulder and I lifted up my right hand and we're just singing. As we're singing, I got a word of knowledge about this man. And I looked at the man and I said, look, I could be wrong, but this is what I'm just picking up on the inside. Were you abused as a child? And he shook his head and looked at me and then the rest of it just started coming. I said, you were, you were abused as a child and because of the things that you went through, you really don't think that you're good enough to be healed. You don't, you don't think that you deserve it. You don't think that God truly loves you. And he shook his head and, and said no. And then he just began to just bawl like a baby. And so I took a few minutes and began to talk to him one-on-one -on -one in front of everybody, Easter, Easter morning, Easter crowd, and began to tell him about how much God loved him. And just began to, to go through a few scriptures and then I stopped and I said, now look, we're gonna sing this song again about how much God loves us. And as we're singing this, I want you to now sing this song with, with this reality in mind that God truly loves you and that you do deserve to be healed, not because of your actions, but simply because of what Jesus already provided for us on the cross. And he shook his head and said, okay. So I put my left hand on his shoulder. He's still sitting in the chair. And I lifted my hand and all of us as a, as a church, we begin to sing about how much God loves us. After a few moments, I, my eyes are closed. After a few moments, I feel my left hand lifting up. It's this guy standing up all on his own. He bends down, touches his toes, lifts up his hands. He's completely healed. I don't know what happened after that because I was so excited. I took off running all around that church. I don't know if I was more excited for me or for him. But I mean, I knew my pride, my reputation was on the line. But friends, I found this out. God is wanting all of us to have some Lazarus type moments in which we step out and we say something that seems absolutely ridiculous in the natural. But it's in these moments in which it allows God to work and to move in our lives. And you don't have to feel real supernatural in that moment. It's not about a feeling. Faith isn't about a feeling, faith is about a knowing. And it's in those moments where you and I are in some crazy situations in which we need an answer from God. And it's not making sense in our head. It's not making sense based on what we can see and hear and feel. We need to be able to hear from Him. And in those moments, that's where we can release our faith and know that we do know the voice of God and we can hear from Him, that He's always speaking. You may be in some times where you know, encounters have happened, experiences have come to you, and you need a touch from God. You need an experience. You don't know what to do. That's where you can very boldly call on your father and find out exactly what to say and what to do in that situation. It may not be in the area of healing. It may be in the area of finances. It may be a situation with your child. It may be a situation in your workplace that you need a miracle. Friend, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is a genius. And if you'll learn to look to him and listen to him, he'll make you look like a genius too. Because in that moment with that man, it looked like I knew what I was doing. I'm telling you, in that moment, I didn't know what I was doing. All I knew was, here's a man who needs a miracle, and I am supposed to be the channel of which God's going to work through in this particular situation. But everywhere that you go, you are a potential miracle waiting to happen. You just need to put yourself in a position to be able to be used by God, to hear from Him, and to say what you speak. I just want to pray for you right now and just encourage you. Father, I pray for those that are watching right now. I thank you that you are our Father and we have a divine connection with you and that we do know your voice. We do know your voice. Holy Spirit, help us to increase our sensitivity to you, all that you're saying, all that you're endeavoring to do in our lives. Father, I thank you for the wonderful opportunity to serve you and to be in this position to represent you with perfection and get results as if it was you doing it yourself. And yet it is God doing it, but he's gonna do it through you and he's gonna do it through me.